Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for dropping in and uh, lovely to see familiar faces and new faces. Uh, and welcome to those of you who are practicing with us uh, later on the recording. Um, I'll make this announcement before I start because I might forget later. So good to know you have it. Uh, so what is today? The 11th? Oh, 9-11. Oh dear. Um, so I'm here for two more, three more weeks? Three more weeks. And then uh, I'm away in Bhutan and Thailand for a month. So when I'm away, there's four really good guest teachers. So um, please keep that in mind and and continue to show up if you're able and enjoy hearing different Dharma voices. Um, that'll all be in the emails uh, with their bio and stuff so you can see who that is. I'm so happy that they're, <laughs> I'm so happy that they're um, coming to share their their teachings. Not their teachings, but their um, hmm, offering of the Dharma. It's the Dharma, yeah. Ah, okay, so I'm excited tonight. I can feel I have a energy <laughs> because I found a new sutta that was new to me and uh, I um these kind of things excite me. <laughs> no comment. Uh so this is one called the six animals. And I was so curious. Oh, six animals, what's that about? I don't remember hearing this in uh, from other talks from other teachers or anything. I was so curious about it, and it's really a great sutta. It's nice and short. Uh, if you like to follow suttas, I've put the link um, down below to in the recording here and um, also in the in the chat here in the Zoom room. So, um, hmm, where to, I've got two different versions in front of me uh, um, because these are written down in the Pali language originally from the oral tradition of the Buddhist time, and then different interpreters translate them into English um, or and other languages. And so these are a couple different translations. It's good to kind of cross-reference them and stuff. <sighs> The Buddha taught a lot um, using imagery and similes, which I find very, very helpful. They're so evocative and uh, descriptive and really a great way for things to land for, for me. I guess I'm a visual learner and I just really find them helpful. And I guess a lot of people do because the Buddha did it often. So I'm not going to just read this sutta. I'm going to try to uh, offer it um, in a bit of a different order, um, but I'll cover them, what these teachings are. It's actually a, a teaching on what's called restraint, sense door restraint. The word sense doors is referring to what we usually think of as the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, or taste, skin, touch, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, taste. And the sixth one is the mind. The mind is also in the Dharma considered a sense door, um, a way that the this being receives sensory information. And so this teaching is about the wisdom of sense door restraint, restraining mm, 
that will become more clear once we get into it. Okay, so I'll come back to that. So this is where the six animals come in. I'll just read this part. So it's as if a person catching six animals of different ranges and different habitats. So they're coming from different areas, different types of um, where they live in the trees or in the earth or in the water. And so you catch these six quite different animals and then bind them together with a strong rope. So in this teaching, they have a snake and they bind it with a rope and then they catch a crocodile, bind it with a rope, a bird, a dog, a hyena, and a monkey. And they're all, and then binding them all together, <laughs> all six of these very different beings bound together and tying a knot in the middle. So you can kind of imagine already the chaos of all these different creatures and their different ways of being and their different comfort areas and where they want to go, etc. And they've all been tied together, bound together, and then put down. In one of the suttas, it says that you kind of give chase. So there's kind of like you set them off running or moving in whatever way they move. Okay, so maybe you can kind of picture this. And then those six animals from their different habitats and different ranges would each pull towards its own comfort zone, we'll say. The snake would pull thinking, I'll go to the anthill. And the um, crocodile would pull, I'll go into the water. The bird would pull thinking, I'll fly up into the air. The dog would pull thinking, I'll go to the village. The hyena would pull thinking, I'll go to the charnel ground. The charnel ground, maybe you might not be familiar with that term, uh, is a, like a burial ground where the bodies aren't buried in the ground. They're laid out in the charnel ground. And uh, so a good place for a hyena to go. And the monkey would pull thinking, I'll go into the forest. So you can see they're all pulling in all these different directions. And eventually these six animals become exhausted. And they would start to submit or surrender to whichever one is the strongest in that given moment. They would come under the control or the sway of whichever is strongest. And this is an analogy of these six sense doors. So it goes on to say in the same way, someone who's practicing the Dharma, meditation, the wisdom teachings, if our mindfulness is undeveloped, unpursued, undercultivated, then our eye pulls us towards pleasing forms and unpleasing sights or forms are repelled. We don't want to see that. Uh, the ear pulls us towards pleasing sounds and doesn't want to hear unpleasant sounds. The nose the same, the tongue the same, or taste, the body, and the intellect, the mind, pulls towards pleasing ideas and thoughts and fantasies and <laughs> embellishments, all the rest of it. And unpleasing thoughts are um, pushed away. And this is called a lack of restraint. And it's so helpful 
I find it helpful to picture these six different creatures being bound together, which is this form, this, all these different that, that are pulling this way and that pushing away from that. I don't like that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to think that. I I want this, you know, uh, all the things that are pleasant that we're constantly after. And this is when we're pushed and pulled in this way, in all the all directions, this is considered a lack of sense door restraint. So uh, before we talk about restraint, I'll just say a bit more. Um, it's It goes on to say a lack of restraint, even the word restraint we're not fond of. I was trying to look up the Pali definition, but I didn't have time. But um, yeah. Okay, so... A lack of restraint is when seeing a form with the eye is obsessed with pleasing forms. We're attached, we attach to it, want that. We are, I, I'm uh, so amused and amazed at watching how my body reaches for something even before I've decided I'm going to eat that or I want that or isn't that pretty. Like even just out for a walk and I see pretty stone or something. And there's this instant <laughs> impulse to just reach for it, get it, take it home. <laughs> I have to talk myself through it sometimes. I'm like, it's okay. You can just see pleasant, beautiful, let it be. Um, I mean, there's so many examples. So many examples. And and the same with unpleasantness, how whether it's a smell or a sound or a thought or a sensation, the impulse is so immediate, the conditioning is so immediate to move away from. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to watch. So we're obsessed with pleasing forms and repelled by unpleasing forms. And we remain with body mindfulness unestablished. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Mindfulness of body is not established in one that is pushed and pulled by these sense doors all the time. With limited awareness, one does not discern as it actually is in the present. Um, okay, so this is an example of a lack of restraint and how we're pushed and pulled and chased and torn asunder um, by these, uh, by not seeing clearly. Oh, it's just pleasant. Wanting is quickly arising on its heels, and we can rest back into present moment wisdom. So, restraint. Here's how uh, restraint is described um, with these six animals. So, these six animals, same, of different ranges and different habitats, um, again are are tied together and knotted and um but this time they are tethered together to a strong post or stake in the ground and so they would still have their same nature it's just nature <laughs> to pull towards you know the snake to the anthill, the crocodile wants to go into the water, the bird thinking I'll fly, the dog, I'll go to the village, the hyena would want to go to the charnel ground and the monkey um, would pull thinking I'll go to the forest. 
But if they're tethered to this stake or post in the ground, they will become exhausted again and they would eventually stand or lay down or sit right there next to that post or stake. It would pull for a while and then they would stop. And in the same way, when we practice mindfulness of body, tethered to this present moment, here and now embodied, immersed, mindfulness immersed in the body, and this is developed and pursued, cultivated, then the eye doesn't pull to what it wants and doesn't want. It just rests. Seeing is known. Form, shape, color is just known. Staying present. Vibration moving through air, meeting the eardrum is just known. Hearing is happening. Pleasant, unpleasant is known. Same with all the sense doors. The tongue doesn't pull toward pleasing flavors. The nose doesn't pull. The sensations, the mind. <laughs> so, um, more about restraint. And what is restraint? This is when a practitioner, a, a meditator, someone on the path of the Dharma, anyone at any stage, beginning, or any place with this curiosity. Um, one who's cultivated mindfulness and wisdom, um, when seeing a form with the eye, when there's mindfulness and embodied mindfulness, we don't become obsessed with pleasing forms, like I gotta have that. <laughs> and also not um, repelled by unpleasing forms. And the same with the sounds and the smells and the taste and the touch and the thoughts, especially the thoughts. <laughs> and, and when practicing sense door restraint, remains with body mindfulness established with immeasurable awareness and discerns is able to recognize what is actually present um i was just looking for another interpretation here yeah and, and then this teaching ends with, thus we should train ourselves. We will develop mindfulness immersed in the body. We will pursue it, cultivate it, give it a grounding. We will steady it and consolidate it and set about it properly. This is how we should train ourselves. Or and to say it another way, undertake it thoroughly. I like that better make it our dwelling place, make it our vehicle. So this is really talking about being really embodied, mindfulness of body. Mindfulness of body is the first foundation of, there's four foundations of mindfulness. And mindfulness of body is, It has the most uh, comprehensive and it's given the most uh, repetition through all the many, many books of Dharma teachings, the suttas. Um, mindfulness of body, this first foundation, is the first foundation for a reason. And just to mention um, in brief, just to note that mindfulness of body has many, many practices within it. One of them that's most often referred to is mindfulness of breathing. And this is 
Again, just one of the first foundation of mindfulness. Then there's mindfulness of the four postures. So whether we're standing, sitting, walking, or reclining, which means all the time, because we're always doing one of those things in some form. So being mindful of what posture the body's in. The, the next mindfulness of body is called clear comprehension, which is kind of an open awareness. It's just noting different things arising and passing. Then there's a whole section on, it's hard to translate this, but it's called repulsiveness of the body. And so these are particular group of teachings for people that are really attached to the beauty of the body or to the beauty of someone else's body. <laughs> if there's a lot of desire and attachment to mm, ourselves and to others being whatever desirable in some way, this is a particular group of teachings to see actually, <laughs> actually, all these bodies are aging and falling apart and full of all kinds of wonderful substances, which the teachings go into in quite graphic detail. Another aspect of mindfulness of body are the elements, which I love. The four elements, really helpful just to practice with and see um, the earth, air, water, and fire elements that are part of life and also part of the uh, materials of this body and it can be really fun and liberating way to practice and then there's a, a whole nother group of nine charnel ground meditations as I mentioned charnel ground is where um, bodies would be laid out after they've died and returned to the earth, returned to the elements, returned to all the animals and the hyenas that are um, on their way there, as well as all the other critters. So there's whole group of meditations where monastics would actually meditate in the charnel ground, stay there overnight and all kinds of stuff in order to... Um, transform our fear of death and awareness of impermanence etc so you can see within mindfulness of body there's a whole there's a, a lot that's that was just a quick list so when we really take up these practices and cultivate them and mm, consolidate them, embody them, establish, really, really establish mindfulness of body, then when these sense doors, which are constantly impacted by information, most of it we just kind of filter out, most of it's neutral, but right now in this moment, there's all kinds of, even when there's just like a hum of the computer, it's this by this sound vibrations are impacting the body and there's still tastes in the mouth and there's smells from downstairs whatever they're cooking and you know there's there's just all kinds of sights and thoughts and there's so much happening moment by moment so much and if we're not established in mindfulness of body, we're just pushed and pulled around like a marionette puppet. Just have like, you know, a puppet that's on the strings and the handle is up here. And it's just someone is being the puppeteer and just pulling the puppet around. If we're not established in mindfulness of body, we're like that. Pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled. And whichever is sense door, whichever of the six animals is strongest, is which way we'll go. Like that donut looks really good. Ah, that's that sense door is 
uh, is strongest in that moment and and we get pulled that way. That sound is unpleasant. And there's still a sense of being that's the most dominant sense door and it gets pulled that way. So this constant being pulled around. The more we establish mindfulness of body in present moment, the more we can just name and just notice pleasant, unpleasant, without it becoming clinging and aversion. Just by noting it, you can just use those words. I often, quite often, just name. I just find myself just naming. It's not like I do it. It's just a conditioned arising now that just unpleasant, <laughs> unpleasant. And it just is so freeing right in that moment. As soon as you just name, oh, it's unpleasant. It, it gives you that pause, that little moment to not create a version out of it. Yeah. Hmm. Is there more? Hmm. And, and it, it, each of the, in the commentaries, each of the six animals is correlated with a different sense door. But you don't need to, you know, worry about that too much. But I'll name them just in case you're interested, because some people might want to contemplate it more. If you find that there's a particular sense door that's really strong for you, where you really um, have a strong pull or aversion, um, you might reflect on, because I don't think the Buddha did these things mindlessly, obviously. Um, so pretty safe to say there, there's probably a reason behind what he chose. The eye sense door is the snake. The ear is the crocodile. The nose is the bird. The tongue or taste is the dog. The body is the jackal or hyena, like a that kind of animal. And of course, the mind is the monkey. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. <laughs> the screeching monkey swinging th through the trees. <laughs> and interesting, the rope that's binding them all together is tanha, craving. Craving is what binds us together into this push-pull, push-pull. And the knot, the knot where they're all tied together with a knot is avidya or ignorance, not seeing clearly, not seeing clearly. And the stake in the ground, the post that we tether them to is mindfulness of body. And then all the senses settle down. They really, really do. The more you practice, some of us were chatting about retreat and the longer retreat is when you can really notice how the sense door is just, you know, if you just keep showing up and you just keep sitting down and practicing, you just keep going to the hall when the bell rings, you or the bell rings and you go and walk or you sit down and everybody's sitting down and you just sit. Eventually, the mind and all of these sense doors just says, oh, thing we're sitting down they just start to settle down and there's not so much chasing chasing pushing pushing and uh it can be quite peaceful okay yes so let us practice mindfulness of body yay um i'll try to just integrate a few of the elements but of mindfulness of body of course we're not doing them all so we'll we'll just guide a little bit with uh posture breathing and might mention the elements we'll see 
just so you can kind of get some flavors, some experience with some of these different ways to practice mindfulness of body so that you can continue. All right. So adjusting your posture so that you can be uh, awake and comfortable as comfortable as possible. I'm just going to mute for a sec. So as you start to settle into your posture, uh, see if you need any movement or stretch or adjustments or other supports so that when you, when you come to stillness, the body really feels ready to move towards stillness rather than just kind of pushing or forcing yourself too quickly into that. And then see what position or posture for the eyes is helpful for your practice this evening or whenever you're practicing with us. Some people practice with the eyes closed. If that brings too much sleepiness at this time, you might choose to practice with the eyes slightly open, but resting downward. So you're just receiving a little bit of a little bit of light, brightness. And as we begin to establish curiosity and awareness of mindfulness of body, we're just going to take some time to guide our attention downward through the body, just noticing any tension and seeing if it if that tension is needed right now or could it soften or let go a little bit so you might begin with the muscles of the face inviting some width or softness across the forehead some space in the hinge of the jaw. Feeling all the little muscles around the eyes starting to relax so the eyes rest back. Feeling the flesh and the muscles around the whole skull. Relaxing. And then that awareness slides down the neck and back and sides of the neck and the throat so that these muscles lengthen and the shoulders drop down slightly, not by pulling them down, but by the muscles lengthening and relaxing in the neck. Let that awareness slide down through the arms into relaxed hands.
And then feeling into the area of the torso, and the back and the belly and the torso. Seeing if a little bit of softness allows deeper breath or a softness in the belly. When we're chronically stressed, the muscles in the inner layer of the belly are often contracted, triggering our adrenal system. So you could let some curiosity move back towards the back of the belly, the inner layers, and see if a little bit of softening could come. And as the upper body relaxes to some degree, we feel now more weightedness, presence through the hips, the pelvis, the buttocks, down through the legs and feet, resting on whatever support that you're on. The more the muscles relax while the spine and the skeleton keep us upright, the more we can connect with feeling grounded, tethered, present. And so one of these aspects of mindfulness is of the body is mindfulness of the postures. So whether you're reclining or partially reclining or sitting, standing, just feel what shape the whole body is in. And within this sphere of awareness of the whole body in this posture, we might have a sense of the four elements, feeling the sensations of the earth element, grounded, heavy, the sensations of form or solidity, the weightedness of the bones and the flesh. And just knowing these are aspects of the earth element, the same as the characteristics of the earth element within the body and outside of the body. Then we might be able to briefly touch some of the sensations of the fire element. You might notice some areas of the body are cooler than others and some parts warmer than others. The fire element is also part of the digestive process.
And the water element of the body, this brings the, brings cohesion, the way adding water to flower creates a dough. The water element brings cohesion to the body. These are the sensations you might feel or just be aware of, of pulse, of flow, all the fluids in the organs, the eyes, the mouth, the nose, the throat. There may be sensations of dryness or moisture. And all of the fluids of the body, of which there are many, The water element, just known as the water element. It's not my water element, it's just water element. And then the air element. And this gives the quality of distension when we, the air element is drawn into the lungs, they expand or, and contract. this air element nourishing every cell of the body. And this air element can just be known in its bare experience as air element. The same air element internally and externally coming into the body, transformed, leaving the body, breathing in what the trees breathe out. And this then turns us towards the mindfulness of breathing, which is another aspect of mindfulness of body. So as you feel this air element moving into and out of the body, if it's helpful, you could take two or maybe three slightly deeper breaths and see where you feel that sensation most clearly. And just let your attention rest at that one place now. So it might be the sensation of the belly or at the chest. or the area of the nostrils, the tip of the nostrils. And now we'll really let our attention just rest at that one place that you've chosen. And really begin to feel this as this tethering into the present moment, mindfulness of body.
Feel the whole length of each breath. It's beginning length of the inhale, the turn of the inhale into exhale, length of the exhale and the ending of the exhale. Full breath. And now we'll practice together in silence for a few minutes. And when it will eventually happen, when one of these other sense doors starts to pull us away from this anchor, try to, when awareness notices, just begin again. Come back to that tether. Come back to this breath. So it might be a thought that comes and we go chasing it. It might be a sound or smell, etc. A sensation. And just notice what it feels like to be pulled away, to abandon the mindfulness of the body and gently begin again. And as we have, to some degree, already restrained some of the sense doors by resting our eyes, by being in stillness, by not eating, etc. 
you might notice that we're mostly working with the, the mind, the monkey in this story. So when you're beginning again, before try not to do it too quickly where you come back to the breath. But just have a little short moment where you, just a bit of curiosity. Was that a pleasant thought or an unpleasant thought? And then begin again. Tethered to this post or pillar of mindfulness of body. This is how we train ourselves. We shall practice mindfulness of body and develop it. Make it our vehicle. Our dwelling place. Our resort. We will build it up and undertake it thoroughly. This breath.
So encouragement to mm, find a mindfulness of body practice that resonates for you. We kind of touched on a few of them tonight, the elements briefly, the breath, the posture, or just mindfulness of the whole body in whatever posture it's in. So you don't have to use the breath. It's one of many tools. And um, and there's more. <laughs> but uh, so don't feel like you have to use breath um, as your anchor. And if you're new to practice or practicing on your own, start with 10 minutes and just just begin by establishing mindfulness of the posture you're in and this this can't not serve you <laughs> it can't not take us closer to freedom from being pulled around by these six animals these six sense doors that have us constantly chasing our tails. Uh, so encouragement to begin and to continue and uh, hope to practice with you again.